from Kaiserreich as Lithuania. Um, as you can see, we do have, you know, on the new patch, new borders over here in Eastern Europe. We own a little bit of territory that I think used to belong to White Ruthenia, and I think this province used to belong to Poland, if I remember correctly. But we're, we're slightly bigger than we were uh, before. This is actually also... No, no, you were part of Lithuania this whole time. So, we are playing Lithuania today. I'm not too sure what path exactly we're going to go. Do we have anything we can do? New direction. You unlock automatically at some point in the future. You happen after Black Monday. So we'll just go for a new direction. Seems fine to me. So what are our national spears? We got German economic domination, which is a political power uh, loss. And consumer good factory. Very cool. Culture divide. 50% stability loss. Uh, deep culture, social, and religious rift is uh, running throughout the kingdom of Lithuania. It's home of Lithuanians, Poles, Belarus, and the Jews. Those are the only... Are the... Only the largest and most notable ethnic groups came within its borders. And we also got disorganized army, so our military also sucks. So, uh, research slot, we are going to go with our basics here. Machine tools, construction. What do we have? 7%? Okay. V very strange to go for a 7% there, but it is what it is. Um, we right now have 3 out of 5 factories, mostly for consumer goods. What I'm going to do is very strangely we're actually going to begin the game with building a naval base because we have a coastal province but it does not have a port just in case that might mean something in the future we're going to build a port within our own country that is going to take how long is that going to take us about a year after that we'll just build some more military factories uh build one in our capital region that seems good to me we do have five units we have a decent general 3, 2, 4, 3. You know, not bad. Playing speed's a little bit bad, but he's got less chance of being wounded. And do we have any good field marshals? A 5, 3, 4, 3 is also pretty good. And he's an infantry leader, and he actually can get more uh, stats uh, as well. So we're just going to put you on... I, I don't really know where to put you. I'll just put you on the border with Germany for now, even though... My, my goal is we're probably going to stay in the Reichspact. Um, because if you leave the Reichs Pact, it's going to be a bad, a bad, bad time. So the Kingdom of Lithuania. The Kingdom of Lithuania was officially founded on December 11, 1917, and its declaration reiterated on February 16, 1918, by the Council of Lithuania, a body of Lithuanian politicians and public figures elected in the Vilnius Conference during the Vilkrieg. The formation of the Kingdom uh, was far from easy, however. The declaration split Lithuanian nationalists and forced Republican-leaning Social Democrats, the LSDP, out of the Council. But only it... Well, it... <laughs> While it only took until 1919 for the Germans to take the Declaration of Independence seriously, ultimately they confirmed Wilhelm von Uricht as Magnus II, the first king of Lithuania since 1263. The Constitution of 1920 established Lithuania as a bimetro constitutional monarchy, guaranteeing basic rights such as freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, and universal suffrage. To this day, it remains one of the most liberal constitutions of the Reichspact. Se lacking serious competition, the Christian Democrats, the LKDP, have formed a government since the country's inception. While well, the economy of the country remains dominated by German Junkers and uh, company branches. The yes, the majority of them are well established in Vilnius, declared a city for German development. The lion's share of foreign investment is directed there and has become a jewel of the Ostaten. A place where you can hear five different languages on your way from the grocery shop. The rest of Lithuania is underdeveloped, however. Uh, this is most obvious with the so-called other Lithuania, the Slavic-speaking southern districts, which more often than not look like they are still stuck in the 19th century. Matthias II, also known as Karl Gurl und Ruck, is the King of Lithuania since 1928. The incumbent Prime Minister is Linus Bistras, represented by the Christian Democrats. Um, so Poland does still have their regency. And White Ruthenia is now a democracy. They're no longer a kingdom as well. I mean, it, if we look at Poland, it does seem like they can still do the Lithuanian King. So I guess Poland and Lithuania is actually still possible in this uh, version of the, of the mod. Memory of the Memel Uprising Nationalism in Lithuania, briefly quenched by the Declaration of Independence at the end of the Ville Creek, saw resurgence during the 1920s. The laws of free expression allowed a revival of Lithuanian culture. Numerous nationalist inclined arts and culture movements began to appear. The Prussian-Lithuanian philosopher Vilnius Strotrat Udenas initiated a revival of old Lithuanian faith. A dissatisfaction with Lithuania's Ostat status started, started to rise. These nationalists started to rally around the Party of National Progress, the TPP, 
a minor nationalist party founded in 1916 and led by Antas Vitona. One of the signatories of the Declaration of Independence ended up sidelined after independence due to his conflict with the Christian Democrats. In 1928, upon the death of Magnus II, Lithuanian nationalists sought to take advantage of this disorder and seize Vilnius and Klaptia. The attack on Vilnius never took place, while the one in Klaptia became known as the Memel Uprising or the Memel Massacre, resulting in the death of 50 armed militiamen at the hands of the German garrison. Spintona distanced himself from the uprising, the TTP dissolved under public backlash and formed under the Nationalist Union, the LTS, while the event became a rally moment for the Lithuanian nationalism. Nowadays, Lithuanian nationalists remain split between two approaches. Those rallied around Antias Mota and the moderate LTS believe that it is possible to achieve a second national revival through democratic means. Others believe this is a dissolution, is what uh, they perceive as a sham. However, uniting the most radical and extreme strands of Lithuanian nationalism is an informal movement known as the Activist Front. The government of Linus Bistras. Representing the Christian Democrats, uh, Leonios Bistras is the fifth Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Lithuania, appointed after the election of 1933. A doctor of private profession, Bistras is an active member and chairman of the party, and, as expected of the Christian Democrats, a devout Catholic. This is the beginning of this term, Lithuania has experienced economic growth thanks to growth in uh, Germany and Lithuania's close ties to its economy, as well as the education reforms. This economic rules means that the Bistras cabinet is confident in stability enough to consider projects once seen as nothing but impossible dreams, such as acquiring Lithuania's own port or organizing land reform. Despite this, it is expected that this will be the last time the Christian Democrats held the majority government alone. Minority parties such as the Committee of Poles in Lithuania, the LLK, and the Jewish Labour Bund, the Bundas, are growing stronger, and so are the Social Democrats, the LSDP. Having recovered their strength after the slump of the 1920s, finally the growth of Lithuanian nationalism has culminated in a nationalist union, uh, becoming a serious challenge to the establishment. Though dismissed as a party of violent radicals, their leader, Anton Simota, is committed to achieving his vision through democratic means. With the plan drawing closer to something, it remains to be seen where Lithuania shall turn. Yeah, nothing bad is going to happen within the next uh, one month or so. It's smooth sailing from Lithuania from here on out. Maybe not for Russia, though. Someone, someone did get shot. So Kornov has immediately stormed his way into Moscow. So we should, I'm assuming, probably see Sanikov rise up soon enough. I mean, our big challenge for this campaign is obviously surviving against the Russians. They are clearly the biggest threat we're going to face. Because, I mean, the Baltic Duchy, Ukraine, and Belarus, how, how, how effective are they really going to be? I mean, how effective am I going to be? I am Lithuania, after all. And I believe it's still possible for all of these guys to leave the Reich's Pact, which would put us in what uh, scientists would say, a difficult situation. Um, we could train up more units. Do we have any supplies at all? actually make more units. We have 138 guns, 18 artillery, and 14 support equipment. I did not change uh, that. You know what? Very quickly, I had to change... Uh... How, did I, how did I not notice I didn't fix this yet? Also, thank you for the subscription. I do really appreciate it. Okay, one second. We're, go we're gonna fix our, um, our widget theme here to be what I want it to be. The one that I spent a uh, good time getting to actually work properly. I guess. No, no, no. Get, skip this. Uh, go to, yeah, widgets. There's gotta be a way to make this a default. I don't know why it, it hasn't saved at all recently. There we go. Anyways, uh, as I was saying, I don't remember what I was saying, but Black Monday is going to be happening very, very soon. Uh, within like two days. Actually, are you just going to give me... No, you're if I own Mamel. And I mean, what's the chances that I own Mamel? I'm going to say pretty low. By the way, when's our election? 37 of next year. Okay, Black Monday has struck. Black Monday hit Lithuania. So how bad is it for us? Negative 25% stability. Negative 50 political power. I mean, it's not great, but I've definitely seen worse. I definitely have seen worse uh, outcomes for us. 
Okay, so it looks like Shouting Town Gal has been declared. Is that the, um, dog meat general? Yeah, that's a national populist run. Maybe, maybe we'll do a run as them at some point in the future, but I don't know when exactly that's going to happen. And you are going to be, yeah, we got to do the emergency meeting. We got to, let's, let's fix Black Monday as soon as we possibly can. The Prestique has reforms. A small country with a meager military industry and even smaller resource base is not fit for the same strategies and tactics which are fielded by its neighboring states. The beginning of the Riktas drafted document is a comprehensive Lithuanian army reforms. In any conflict, the Lithuanian army will only see uh, use in two possible ways. A supporting force for a great, uh, greater Imperial German army or as a last chance defense against foreign invaders if and when Germany army fails. As such, reforms of the Lithuanian army must be kept in mind in uh, these two ways and optimize its effectiveness in both. These reforms include an emphasis on military aviation, uh, modernization of equipment of the Lithuanian army, an overhaul of officers' education and a formation of a modern command structure, uh, yada yada yada. We get more war support, we get more army experience. That, I mean, I guess we'll mostly be going with the support company. The Guardius language shift. Guardius, uh, Hadona and Belarusian. Has, a, has got a language shift of sorts with its local population adopting Lithuanian or Belarusian. The trend seems to have organized or originated with the Lithuanian Jews themselves adopting Lithuanian or Russian or Belarusian, uh, who makes up the majority of the city's population and, like many other cities in Lithuania, hold an alliance share business due to practices of the Bundas. This has resulted in locals having to use Lithuanian when dealing with the Lithuanian Jews, with most now only speaking Belarusian as a home language. Furthermore, many have begun to view themselves as uh, Litvins, an archaic Slavic term for citizens of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. This phenomenon seems to only be localized in Gardinas, the residents of Valk Viskas, seen our northern cousins as eccentric at best and insults best not repeated. Okay, so again, 3% more radical socialist. Is there any interest in Belarus? If I'm not mistaken, what I did read on the Kaiserreich subreddit, it might, it might be wrong on this. But if Belarus capitulates to Russia, you can enforce a union between White Ruthenia and Lithuania. I don't know if that's true, but it's what I read. But it might also be complete bullshit. <laughs> okay, Valkyrie the Howling of the Wolves. Valkyrie the largest southern city within the Kingdom of Lithuania, is unique for several reasons. One of those is the city is divided amongst Belarusians, Jews, and Poles with each going up by their day-to-day -day business. Unlike the Lithuanian Jews in the Gradinas, the Jews of Volkaviskas are Polish-speaking and do not have any affiliation with the Bundas. The economic of the city is mainly based on production of machinery, though mainly due to the politics of the city, this area is sorely in need of investment. No real nationalist movement has taken place in the city, although many of the Belarusian population, unlike their northern and central cousins, look to Minsk for cultural guidance over Vilnius. And the, uh, the other wars, wars in China don't really matter for us so much. Also, let's turn off the fog of war because it looks like ass. I'll delete this line. You might as well just stay on the Polish border because that's... You're the only member who's not in the Reich's Pact, I believe. You know, Poland is not in the Reich's Pact. Not that I expect them to really do anything. I mean, I guess they could still theoretically turn Syndicalist or something like that. You're really just declaring, you're declaring a war on everybody, huh? Okay, Australasia is once again a democracy, good for them. Big troubles in little... I don't know how you pronounce the weird L. Uh... Balistock? Balistock, uh, like the rest of the kingdom, has been, uh, hasn't been spared from the brunt of the effects of Black Monday. This has further aggravated tension between the Lithuanian Polish and Jewish communities within the city. This has stemmed from the Jewish businesses being able, uh, being able to weather the effects of Black Monday due to their tight-knit community, Polish Jews' bonds affiliations. As a result, many Polish businesses have gone other, and in some cases, being bought by their Jewish counterparts, serving as further slaps to the face. Many have turned to uh, Sadius Nurkowicz, the leader of the Committee of Lithuanian Poles, that there is some kind of relief in the situation. After a short meeting, uh... Naruto, Witsk, and other Lithuanian Polish leaders have said that they would need to turn to Vilnius as support. This could mean a reduction in autonomy for the region. Uh, more social liberalism, we get less stability. I mean, right now, we are social conservative. 
Yeah, we'll support them. Why not? This is a regular L pronunciation. Okay, fair enough. So I'm not too sure who um, Democratic Coalition established in Mexico. I'm not too sure who. Okay, chairman's been elected. Chairman of the TUC. I'm not too sure which way we're going to go for our politics. So you guys have gone um, radical socialist. I do know they added uh, like a lot more events into the game. We might see some more of those in uh, this campaign here. What do we need to research? It's still 1936. Um, we should have. No, no, no. Go for go for more uh, research speed for sure. Okay, the left KMT have risen up. We'll see how they uh, do here. I already declared one on Shing. It doesn't really matter. A lot of wars going on over there. So far, nothing else too uh, crazy has happened. Uh, Afghanistan's lost their war. Nobody should be surprised by that. A form of normality restored. With the government providing limited uh, aid to body stock, level of normalcy has been restored to the city. The tension between the, pol the Poles and the Jewish population have dropped in the city, and people are just trying to get on with their lives as opposed to rooting their neighbors. With a small gesture, the Polish community within uh, body stock is fully starting to look to villainous for, uh, villainous for aid as opposed to Warsaw. Let's go. 1% stability. We're doing it. Um, we do need a little bit of steel, because what are we, we're producing... Like, we have, like, no natural resources. And apparently we can't trade with any of you. Do I... Oh, yeah, because I don't have a port. We actually can't import anything. So it's a good thing we're actually... Oh, yeah, I have no sewing factories. So this is never going to get finished. Very cool. Um, so we have to trade over land. Um... Let's just... I guess we'll trade with Illyria? I have no civilian factories, right. Also, is it just me or does Illyria have a new flag? This flag looks different. Like, do you guys have new flags? Behemoth also might have a new flag. It, it looks different to me. But I also might be going crazy. Who knows? Yeah, it does look like a new flag, doesn't it? We'll prepare a war into Poland, just in case. Am I gonna get less steel in- I didn't even get to read the event, because I accidentally clicked it on too fast. <laughs> Whoops! Well... So much for that. Let's do an envoy. Multi population political power gain. Well, let's try to loosen trade restrictions with Germany. The area is now just Greater Croatia. I feel like that's kind of like what it's always been, though. Okay, Lithuanian group for the study of French culture. Uh, Lithuanian group for the study of French culture, an organization of left-leaning Lithuanian poets and writers. The official stated purpose of learning about the culture of France and how it has been affected by the revolution of 1919. Total members are Svalin Neres, Vikos Kier, and Pietras Rika. It is widely considered to be a front of influence for the international and Lithuanian writing circles. So, 1% more support, I guess 3% uh, more support in total. And reaction of the Bistras government. The Black Monday uh, and the ensuing economic crisis left the country completely unprepared. The government of Lina Bistras operated with the belief that the Tipras Golden Era would outlast them, and thus did not build up a sufficient money reserve to counter the crisis. An emergency session of the cabinet has been summoned to consider all possible solutions for recovery. The summit has sharpened along a present division within the Christian Democrats. The growing wing of the party finds itself enthralled with the ideas proposed by the professor, Christian ideologue, Statis uh, Salkokis, a proponent of democratic corporatism and a federal devolution of the kingdom. This federalist wing believes that ensuring autonomy for the German market and rallying the trust of the people in corporate economies can help weather the crisis. Prime Minister Bistras is not willing to throw the, guard, uh, the Germans under the bus, however, he and the old guard of the party have instead drawn up a series of uh, initiatives known as the Galvan Akkus Plan, named after our Minister of Finance. This plan involves development of sustained industrial heartland in Vilnius and Connes, and bailed out the worst of the German Junkers to keep foreign capital flowing into the country. 
Now, so this planet is not resonated well with the Lithuanian people, however. The inhabitants of southern regions, the so-called Outer Lithuania, protest his abandonment, and so do the Social Democrats and the Nationalist Union. In her eyes, this reliance on German investors is what caused the crisis in the first place. The first result of the injected surplus seems to be positive, however. Re republic Revolution in Iran. So they are now a republic. Yeah, so we're definitely seeing new events for um, different worldwide events. I call for land reform. The question of land reform was one which the first governments of Lithuania had failed to answer. In the aftermath of the Vild Creek, many of the uh, manors across Lithuania ended up abandoned and right for the taking. The Polish nobility started uh, re repatriating and Russian nobles fled for their homeland. Radically invited members of the legislature called for disrupting the distributing the land to the poor and the landless, and this measure was eventually endorsed by several members of the Christian Democrats, uh, such as Miklas uh, Krup Avikius, who saw this as a way to stifle the growth of socialism among the peasantry. Ultimately, however, no concession was reached, and many of the abandoned manors were brought under, bought out by Germans at low prices. Large agribusiness established themselves in Lithuania countryside, causing resentment among the landless peasantry, and even serving as a way for some German families to settle down in Lithuanian territory. Black money has changed the situation in the countryside, however. Many of these uh, formerly thriving conglomerates are now desperately trying to sell their land, even at the lowest possible price, all over the country to save operations and the homeland. This presents an opportunity for the Lithuanian government to step in, buy out the land, and ensure the fair distribution of the land to the countryside. If Nick, for every time the Iranians get the monarchy, you wouldn't have any nickels. Yeah, they, they, um... They, they do like having uh, revolutions. Remember, does the, um, the Social Democrats, do they, do they become the, the Socialists? I don't quite remember. No, I don't believe so, because they don't have the Socialist government. Your investors in banded Lithuania. The Galivankos plan has not yielded the results that the government has sought. German businesses and investors continue abandoning the Lithuanian market. Their companies are liquidating what little assets they have left and are putting their f facilities for sale in order to recoup at least some of their losses. Nature does not tolerate a vacuum, however, and the actors are starting to take advantage of the investors' flight. In Vilnius, several of the most notable companies have been purchased by Jewish business owners, unions, and workers' cooperatives, many of them in cooperation with Lithuanian and Polish entrepreneurs. The Jewish Labor Board, or Jewish Labor Bund, in Lithuania wielded its influence within the community and especially amongst the Jewish Labor Unions, several of whom it directly operates, help organize these buyouts. The other companies in Kaus and Berlistok, Lithuania and Polish uh, respectively, began buying out former German assets at a low price, seeking to wrest control of the market from German competitors after having been suppressed for many years by not-so-clean business practices. The transition has uh, been far from soft, however. Thousands of workers in Lithuanian cities have been laid off and are starting to radicalize. The local companies organize these buyouts of pretty much all of the remaining assets they have, leaving their future uncertain. And in fact, many of these freshly established cooperatives and companies are reported to declare bankruptcy within the following weeks. Should we cling on to our guns, our economy... Should we cling on to our guns, our economy will go through this transition and come out more independent. However, when it, when it is so painful and so difficult, we'll be able to weather the storm. We're going to lose more stability, so we're at, we're at a beautiful 